Hi and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Thinker. Today we will be integrating Shelly's humidity and temperature sensor inside Home Assistant. We'll start in 10 seconds. As always, before we go any further, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined the channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And also, thanks to everybody who liked my videos, subscribed to videos or watched my videos. Thank you. And now, let's get back to video. Today we will be installing humidity and temperature sensor inside Home Assistant. This small battery powered device by Shelly provides you with data about the temperature and humidity. What is the difference between the most sensors and this sensor? Well, this one, as other Shelly devices, is working over Wi-Fi. So you do not need any additional hub or device to hook up this to Home Assistant. You just need a wireless connection that you probably already have at your house. In terms of the battery longevity, unfortunately, I still cannot give you any estimate on how long it will run on one battery, because I have been using it only for about three months. So what is the biggest difference between this sensor and other sensor? There isn't any difference except for this one using the Wi-Fi. In terms of sensors or entities that you will get from this sensor, it depends on how you integrate inside Home Assistant and as always you have at least three options. One is MQTT, that is the preferred choice for me, at least for the battery power devices. The other one is the integration that is available inside Home Assistant, which I think that from version 2021.3 does support battery power devices. And the third option is, of course, to use the Shelly for Hass or a custom component that you can get from HACS. In this video, I will show you how to integrate them using the MQTT. And we will be using a special script that needs to be added to Home Assistant so we can enable MQTT Auto Discovery inside Home Assistant for Shelly devices. So what entities will you get from this sensor if you add it via the MQTT? You will get, of course, humidity and temperature because this is humidity and temperature sensor. You will get the IP address of your device, which is great if you want to access device via the web interface. Just don't forget that you will need to boot device or wake device from the slip. The other sensor that you will receive also is a battery, because of course this is a battery power device and you need to track the status of the battery. And as I mentioned, unfortunately, my battery is still at 100%. Not unfortunately, but I cannot give you any estimate on the lifespan of the battery. And the last sensor you can get from this device is, of course, the firmware status, meaning on if there is a newer version of firmware or off if there is a no new version of firmware available. In order for you to add this device, you have to find it on the Wi-Fi network. If device is sleeping, you have to press button once again to wake it up and you should see Shelly HD access point. Connect to it. After it is connected, open the web browser and type in 192.168.33.1, which is default IP address when Shelly device is working in access point mode. In sensor settings, you can turn external power here. Temperature units can be of course changed from the metric to Fahrenheit. Temperature threshold is used to wake the device up if the temperature changes by some threshold. The minimum value for the change is 1. And the same thing exists for the humidity threshold, where you can also wake up device if the humidity changes by a certain number. Temperature offset and humidity offset allows you to tweak or improve accuracy of your temperature and humidity sensor. Actions allow you to report the sensor values by using the HTTP URL with the GET parameters. Please note, as indicated here, that using more than two actions can have negative impact on the operation of the device. Sensor URL actions allow you to use specific URL calls if temperature changes or goes above or under some value, and also if humidity goes below or above certain value. 
Settings are, of course, typical for shell devices. We have time zone and geolocation. Usually this is not needed for the configuration because it can automatically be pulled and updated. Device name, for the purposes of this video, I will not be changing. Firmware update is used to check if there is a new firmware and if there is new firmware to download it. Factory set, of course, resets the device. Device reboot reboots device. Device discoverable, I always leave this make device discoverable. And last thing is device information. Internet and security. Here we have to configure some things. First, we will need to configure Wi-Fi mode. We select connect Shelly to the existing network. Type here the name of the access point, your password, and all my shell devices have static IP address. So let me quickly insert them. Save. And here it is. This time we are using the IP address of my standard home network. In Internet and Security, we can now configure other settings. I really do suggest to configure backup client if you have alternative access point. Wi-Fi reconnect allows you to reconnect to the strongest access point that is available for this device. Access point we will not be enabling because we want this device to connect to our network. Restrict login I will also be not using. It allows you to specify username and password for the access to the device. For the SNTP server, let's leave time.google.com and in advanced developer settings. First, make sure that enable COIoT is enabled, especially if you're planning to use internal Home Assistant shell integration. One of the precautions, especially if you have problem with the multicast, is to replace this with the IP address of your Home Assistant and port needs to be 5683. Save. Typing in the IP address and the port number instead of multicast, we'll change it to unicast. When you change the COIoT, make sure that you reboot your device. This is the simplest way of the integration, and this is also how battery powered devices work with the Home Assistant shell integration. Next thing for me is to enable MQTT, because I use MQTT. If you are using username and password, type here your username and password for the MQTT. Change this IP address to match the IP address of your MQTT server. And there are a couple of things that you can change or tweak here. First is you can try and play with the retain. And next setting that you can try to play with is changing the max QoS. Default value is zero. If you're having issues with the sensor, try putting here one. Don't forget to save. And this should be it. And now Shelly temperature and humidity sensor is configured. For the rest of the integration, let's go back to Home Assistant. If everything is okay, you will now see either discovered here for the new Shelly device, which you can just then configure, or in my case, since I already did have this device previously, I did remove it, but it didn't show up as a new device. It was just added to the list of other Shelly devices. Here I have Shelly humidity and temperature sensor. And these are the values that are pulled if using Home Assistant integration. So we have temperature and humidity. This part was easy. The next part for the MQTT has a little bit more steps. First, make sure that you have Python script enabled in Home Assistant. How to do that? Let's go to Visual Studio Code. For start, we will search our configuration to see if we already have Python scripts enabled or not. Python. Looks like I don't have it. So at the end of the file, we will add following Python scripts, singular, not plural. So this is needed to enable Python scripts inside Home Assistant, but that's not all. In the root folder where our configuration files are, we need to create additional folder, and this one will be called Python scripts, plural. Scripts. Okay, so by adding Python script, we are enabling Python integration, Python script integration inside Home Assistant. And the default location where Home Assistant will be looking for those scripts is inside folder, 
configuration folder and the one folder down called Python scripts. Inside this folder we now have to copy one file. And now let's go to GitHub repository from Maciej Bieniek where we can find the Shellys Autodiscovery Python script. The link to this GitHub repository as always will be in the comment section below. Please take your time and read the documentation, it's not very long and it can help you in the future. But long story short, this script adds MQTT discovery support for shell devices inside Home Assistant. And as it says, the prerequisite is to enable Python script in the configuration YAML file and also to create the Python scripts folder where the scripts themselves will be located. So what we need in the Python scripts folder we have one script that we need to download. You can either right-click, save link, and save this file, or the other option for people that are lazy like me is to click on the script name, go to raw, select everything, copy, then go back to Home Assistant, and in Python scripts folder create new file that will be called Shelly's Discovery. Dot .py We have new file and here we will paste the contents of the file we copied. Save just to make sure that everything is saved and that should be it. At this point we can restart Home Assistant and by restarting Home Assistant we will a activate Python scripts and b Home Assistant will already know that there is a shell is discovery script inside Python scripts folder. So let's go to configuration Server control check configuration. And if everything's okay, press on restart. I really do hope that you like this video so far. And if you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really means a lot to me, but it also of course helps with YouTube algorithms that track how many people have seen and liked the video. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go to developer tools services and if we type here python we should now see python scripts reload and one python script that we just copied from the github called shell discovery but this is not all in order for us to automate everything we need to create two automations one will be called shelly announce and the other one will be called shell discovery so let's do that go to configuration automations Add automation, start with empty one, shell is announce, trigger will be home assistant start and additional trigger will be time pattern, one hour. Uh, please note if you change this value and for example you have shell emotion this can significantly impact the battery life, so try to leave it as is. And for the action, it will be call service MQTT publish, and I will paste this here from the GitHub. So it should look something like this. Payload announce and topic is Shelly's command. Let's save this and we should now create a second automation. Shelly's discovery. Mode will be queued. Q length 999. Trigger. MQTT and topics will be Shelly's announce for the action service Python script Shelly's discovery edit in YAML and once again I will paste the values from the GitHub page let me quickly format everything.
and this should be it. Let me quickly check it. Yes, this looks okay. Save. Let's go back to configuration, server control automations. We are now reloading them. And Shellis. We now have announce and discovery. Announce will be run every hour. Discovery will be run every time there is a MQTT announce topic. Let's go to configuration, integrations, MQTT, where is MQTT? 56 devices, and let me type H and T. So we now have here Shelly humidity and temperature sensor, battery status, is the firmware update available or not, humidity, IP address of the sensor and the temperature. We can add this to Lovelace. Let's add this to climate, add to Lovelace UI, overview. And we now have data inside Home Assistant from our Shelly humidity and temperature sensor. And this is pretty much it. Of course, you are now free to do various other automations with your humidity and temperature sensor. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to create a weather template so you can use various sensors to create a weather card. And humidity and temperature sensor can be one of them. Then, of course, you can also use it to trigger automations. For example, if the temperature falls below a certain threshold, you can turn your heating, or if the humidity goes above certain level, you can turn your uh, air conditioner on so it dries your air. This now all depends on where you put and how you use your humidity and temperature sensor. And this is it for this Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video or any previous video I did, you can always find me on the Discord server. And the link to Discord server is in the description of the video but feel free to leave comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified in the future updates, and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.